Throughout the 135 million years that spanned the Jurassic and the Cretaceous period, the dinosaurs were dominant, with no non-dinosaur land animal surpassing the size of a dog. Until about 130 million years ago, where at the height of the dinosaur reign, a crocodile called Sarcosuchus first appeared that was not only a large animal, but could even rival dinosaurs in size. Out of the many specimens of Sarcosuchus that have been discovered, none of them are complete enough to tell how large they were, so size estimates have to be made based on their remains. Many estimates have placed Sarcosuchus at around 12 meters long, with a weight of 8 tons or more, which would make it the largest crocodile known to have lived. However, the methods used to come up with these estimates may be outdated. Numerous methods have been developed for the prediction of body size for extinct crocodiles from their fossils like using the length of their skull or femur, and then using the proportions of living crocodiles as a reference. The problem is that whereas all living crocodiles are semi-aquatic, prehistoric crocodiles were actually a lot more diverse in lifestyle, and femur length to body size will vary greatly depending on how adapted to the water or land they were. Furthermore, prehistoric crocodiles are more diverse in skull shape as well, and these problems may be exaggerated with Sarcosuchus because they were actually quite distantly related to modern crocodiles, and technically weren't even true crocodiles. All living crocodilians diverged from a common ancestor in the late Cretaceous, about 80 million years ago, but Sarcosuchus diverged from them much longer ago than this, and so isn't the ancestor of any living crocodiles, and is technically just an ancient reptile that looks like a crocodile, known as a crocodilomorph. A study in 2019 found that the most accurate way to estimate ancient crocodiles and overcome these difficulties is to estimate body size with their skull width. Applying this method to Sarcosuchus would bring its length down to about 9 to 10 meters. So Sarcosuchus was still a giant even with this lower estimate, stretching to almost twice the length of the largest currently living reptile, the saltwater crocodile, and they may have weighed as much as an elephant even just their skull was almost as long as a person. There are many teeth and other fragmentary remains of Sarcosuchus that have been found throughout the Sahara Desert. This is because during the mid Cretaceous, when Sarcosuchus was at large, sea levels were much higher, which made the Sahara a tropical wetland. It would have had many rivers and lakes throughout the land, which served as a home for giant fish and a water source for many large herbivorous dinosaurs, which would seem like the perfect habitat for a giant crocodile. There was another species of Sarcosuchus discovered in northeast Brazil as well, called Sarcosuchus hati, that was also massive, although probably slightly smaller than its African relative. This is because during the mid-Cretaceous, South America and Africa were connected, creating one large continent, and this ecosystem partially spanned both continents. The habitat of Spinosaurus would have been very similar to this ecosystem, however 20 million years later, when South America had separated from Africa. In fact, one of Spinosaurus' smaller and more ancient relatives, Suchomimus, would have lived alongside Sarcosuchus. Sarcosuchus were probably widespread in this ancient watery ecosystem since so many of their remains have been found here. Having so many large crocodiles in one ecosystem makes you wonder what they would have eaten, and it is tempting to conclude that similar to how Nile crocodiles feed on large herbivores like wildebeest and zebra, that Sarcosuchus ate the large herbivores of the time, the dinosaurs. The most common herbivorous dinosaur in this ecosystem was the elephant-sized iguanodon relative Lurdosaurus. This dinosaur was an ornithopod, so it would have been on the smaller side for a herbivorous dinosaur, and therefore a more likely candidate for Sarcosuchus' prey if it did hunt dinosaurs. Lurdosaurus has also been put forward by quite a few scientists as a possible aquatic dinosaur. It had unusual proportions for an iguanodon relative, and its hands spread out quite widely, which is seen in aquatic animals so some researchers think it lived a semi-aquatic lifestyle similar to a hippo. This would have meant that it would have spent a lot of its time in close proximity to Sarcosuchus. However, this could be seen as evidence against a predator-prey relationship between these two animals. If Lurdosaurus was semi-aquatic, and large numbers of them were swimming around Sarcosuchus daily, this could indicate that they did not need to worry about being eaten by an aquatic predator too much. This could be seen with hippos. They spend a lot of their time around Nile crocodiles because adult hippos are too big to be threatened by them, 
However, hippo calves are commonly fed upon by large crocodiles, and this may have been the same with Sarcosuchus. They may not have hunted adult Lurdosaurus, but would occasionally try and hunt juveniles. This part of the world also had a sauropod called Nigosaurus, that was a miniature sauropod, being considerably smaller than a lot of its giant relatives, and may have been in the size range that a large crocodile like Sarcosuchus could have tackled. So if Sarcosuchus was a large dinosaur hunter, amazingly it would have been able to eat the sauropods in its habitat. One problem with the dinosaur eater view of Sarcosuchus is that its skull may not have been the correct shape for hunting big game, and it may have been better at hunting smaller animals. The crocodile jaw is built for high bite forces and not much else, and because of this it has very little maneuverability other than up and down motions and as their jaw is so long, they lack the ability to use their forelimb claws to pin their prey in place while biting chunks of meat off, like mammalian carnivores can. Because of these limitations, the way that crocodiles break apart large prey is by deploying what is called a death roll, where they bite down on a chunk of their prey and then spin their body to break it off. Crocodiles also use this to incapacitate large living prey as well, and from observing living crocodilians, it seems that this manoeuvre is very important to them for hunting big animals. A study in 2014 looked at models of giant extinct crocodile skulls to see if they were capable of pulling off death rolls as well. The study found that Prurosaurus, a giant caiman that lived about 20 million years ago, and Dinosuchus were most likely capable of pulling off death rolls on their victims but that Sarcosuchus wasn't. If Sarcosuchus was incapable of using death rolls against their prey, this would either reduce the size of their prey they could have hunted significantly, or meant that they hunted large animals in a different way to modern crocodiles. Adding to this, there is no actual direct evidence of Sarcosuchus eating dinosaurs. Dinosuchus was another giant Cretaceous crocodile, but lived in North America about 40 million years later than Sarcosuchus. Also, it was actually a true crocodile. Whereas Sarcosuchus belonged to a now extinct ancient lineage of crocodiles, Dinosuchus was in the alligator family, but was a giant, being around 10 meters long. Its skull was much wider and shorter than the skull of Sarcosuchus, which meant that it was much better equipped to deal with the stresses that came with a death roll. Adding to this, there is actually some evidence of Dinosuchus eating dinosaurs. Bite marks have been found on the tail vertebrae of herbivorous dinosaurs from the same region as Dinosuchus that most closely resemble the teeth of the monster croc. These findings mean that it is likely that Dinosuchus was the true giant dinosaur crushing croc that Sarcosuchus is often envisioned as. Because Sarcosuchus's jaw does not seem to be that well suited for eating large animals, some scientists have argued that it may have primarily eaten fish. Its long jaw and large bulla on their nostrils is more like the Perseverus gariau than the wide and short snout of other crocodiles. Many species of crocodiles, like Nile crocodiles, that don't even have these jaw specializations, are still capable of catching fish on occasion, so Sarcosuchus surely would have been capable. Furthermore, gariels themselves are actually one of the largest species of crocodile alive today, and have a family member known as Griposuchus that was also another giant 10 meter crocodile that lived several million years ago, and was almost certainly perseverous like its smaller relative, which shows that giant crocodiles can definitely be supported on a fish diet. Although they were around the same length, Sarcosuchus did have a considerably larger build than Griposuchus though, that suggests their lifestyles weren't exactly the same. The freshwater habitat that Sarcosuchus lived in had many species of giant fish like Morsonia, a 3 meter long coelacanth, and Neocratodus africanus, a 1 meter long lungfish, so maybe Sarcosuchus specialized feeding on larger fish. Or more likely, Sarcosuchus descended from fish eaters, but then evolved to eat a more generalized diet. Sarcosuchus's closest relatives, Vestisuchus and Elisuchus, both had elongated skulls with even more features that you would expect to see for a fish eater. So Sarcosuchus may have eaten a generalized diet, including fish and small dinosaurs, and just had an elongated jaw because of its ancestry. This is seen in the modern day false gariau, that looks similar to the gariau, but the snout broadens significantly towards the base, similar to Sarcosuchus. The false gariel looks like a gariel, but actually has quite a varied diet, eating fish, but also many other types of prey, including some fairly big animals like monkeys, and Sarcosuchus may have been similar, just scaled up five times. 
So these giant crocodiles would have been common in these ancient African wetlands, and probably had a varied diet consisting of fish and perhaps smaller dinosaurs, but they all disappeared around 110 million years ago. Although it isn't exactly known why Sarcosuchus went extinct, it was probably due to climate change. Although large predators lord over their ecosystems, they are usually the most reliant animal on the ecosystem being healthy, because they need such an abundance of food to survive. However, Sarcosuchus was not the last giant crocodile, as they evolved again later in the Cretaceous, and the giant croc Riposuchus survived until as little as 10,000 years ago. Thank you so much for watching, and thanks to all my patrons for supporting the channel, especially the big contributors like Sammy Voz, Green Foz, Grim Marshall, Brandon Klopp, Ken Ham, and Nightrunner. If you enjoy content like this, then consider becoming a patron as well.